Alrighty, hey, hi, hello, welcome back, Alexandrian Codex. This should be a relatively short one tonight. We're not gonna get super into it. I'm gonna be talking about something that I've been doing over on the Donna Victory Discord. Uh, um, uh, alongside my uh, my world design responsibilities over there, I've been running a roleplay event to help take some of the uh, load off of our admin and moderator team while they go through some other stuff and to keep some engagement up. What kind of thing? Well, um, it's a it's an interesting challenge. It's absolutely an interesting challenge thinking about and talking about what kind of roleplay games, formats, or narratives are scalable, where they can be engaging for a group of five or engaging for a group of 50. Now, nothing's going to scale perfectly, right? The first event that we tested out, the first kind of game type that we ran, that was really just to gauge how well polls worked, how well breaking the roleplay down into separate factions worked. How we played with that initially was just a game of Clue, where the factions would all vote, their votes would be tallied up, and whatever majority of a certain faction voted for, that's what they chose. It was a little clunky and it was difficult to coordinate, but it showed promise. It demonstrated a workable kind of framework that we could build off of. Following that, we began to enter phase two. Phase two of introducing this faction roleplay was to introduce elements called faction leaders or faction representatives. Faction representatives are the stand-in player of a faction. They're the leader, the representative on this, this space station that they're all on. I, they don't have complete authority because that still relies on the, or lies in the hands of the administrator, the moderators. And so they're more like, elected representatives than they are authority figures. Though it's a fine line. It's a fine line. They are the de facto head of their faction and are expected to take actions on behalf of that faction. They need to be voted in at least once a month. And we're still like a month now into the, the first series, first election. So a couple weeks from now, we will be having a second election. We like to run at least one event every month. And this month, the event to expand upon what we have already introduced in terms of faction infrastructure, political infrastructure, station infrastructure, and scaffolding for people to start building off of and role-playing in response to and creating more and more context and depth to this, uh, this world is I suggested playing a game of diplomacy. Now, this is a tricky ask because part of our restructuring of this roleplay was a move away from player versus player violence. We had a group of honestly only about four people, five people roleplaying out very graphically gratuitous scenes, just kind of doing tone deaf, uninspired. Well, I'm a, I'm a secret agent. I'm a, I'm a special forces guy, and, uh... They don't act anything like those people actually do, and they just go around shooting and being brooding all the time. A, a teenager's idea of what it means to be, you know, a spy or something like that. Not, not really striking a very nuanced, effective, well-researched, well-thought-out note. Not to be overly mean, but it... It played a lot like uh, a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and that's because uh, there was some miscommunication, a mixture of signals when it came to direction for the RP that was coming from former moderator 
uh, that overstep their authority a little bit. So when talking about a game like Diplomacy, talking about anything engaging with violence, warfare, uh, gratuitous or otherwise, that was a delicate conversation, one that I had with our administrator, with Raven. And uh, it's, it's a subject and a topic we've brought up a few times. If we introduce more violent scenes, how do we want to do that? How do we want to keep it separate from the station, this kind of neutral home base? What does that look like for us? Um, and so we came down to two options for this Discord roleplay diplomacy game two options the first being something on the station which i'm not going to go into great detail because there's always opportunity to revisit that one and to play with that one in the future the alternative rather than being on the station itself was being on a, a nearby moon or asteroid the initial uh, suggestion from raven was planet but i thought that even was too big and we should keep things small. Just give them a valuable rock, not a livable one. Rayan uh, is, is quite busy right now. Nice burp, Alex. I mean, as am I, but yeah, I like helping the team. I like our team. I think we have a great team and uh, we're here for one another if we can help. So I drew up a map for a diplomacy game on the station and Raven created a poll to poll all of the role players to see if they were more interested in an event on station or an event off station. The poll only ran for 24 hours. This was last minute planning going, hey, on Saturday, we need a new event up. What's that going to look like? Do you have any ideas? We've been putting this off. Fuck it. I can throw something together last minute. Can you put up a poll for me? The poll ended up having quite a few uh, folks interact with it. If I go and take a look here, out of character discussion. Let's jump all the way back up here on the Discord. So, on August 15th, at 9.18 p.m., the poll closed with 38 total votes. 19 for an on-station event, and 19 for an off-station event. The vote had been tied off and on all day, though the station, on-station event, had an early lead, so I did a draft for that map first. Let me see if I can dig that up so I can show that off here. I don't even think this is the version I wanted to keep, is it? Ah, maybe, maybe, but we can we can show this off. Well, I'll get the overlay out of here. Goodbye, black screen. Oh, look at me. Look at me out of focus. Hell yeah, camera, you do your thing. Why am I orange? I don't... I don't know. Because it's dark in here? Because it's dark in here. We'll go with that. Do, do I need to fuck with the, the settings a little bit? Yeah, but I... Do, you know, to be honest, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. Um, now if I go to configure video, and I go to camera control, exposure's at a negative four, what if I put you in a negative five? What if I, ah, no, I want you in a negative three. Three? Yeah. Ooh, no, that frame rate. Look at that frame rate. Ah, no, negative five is fine. Negative four is fine. Okay. But like... The, the brightness slider isn't going to do a damn thing for me. Yeah, no. Reset that to zero. Look, should uh, should I be playing with this live? No, but I just noticed that I was orange, and I'm not really a, an America first kind of person, so... I... <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay. Fine. I, that's not going to be the way I do this. What if I go into here? What if I uh, right-click and I put in a filter? And I go to here, and we color correct this. Oh, I already have a color correction on this. Can I hue shift me? We're starting at zero, zero. Green, green, blue. Blue is kind of what I want to do, right? 
Yeah, but not that intense. Opacity needs to be like way, way the... No? Oh, not actually clicking opacity. That's terrible! Oh, I need to desaturate this. I need to desaturate this. Well, that's just making me black and white. And honestly, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Hmm. No, let's move hue shift back to zero. I think I can play with this, but wait, can I play with it right now? I don't think so. I really had this at zero saturation. It's fine. It's fine. This was set up in a different lighting situation. Remember how I said I wasn't going to get sidetracked? Well, hey, I lie. This was the first map. This was derived from an earlier map as a, a way to start. Some perks of this map design. Why do I have this open in paint.net? That ain't right. That ain't right at all. Hold on. Um. Oh, did I not move the uh, bad loop map? No. Asteroid Diplo. Yeah, these two shouldn't be up here at all. Just, just make you wider. Just make you wider. Real quick. There we go. Asteroid Diplo, you go into Diplo. Asteroid Diplo, you go into Diplo. Freeport 19 Roots. Diplo goes into Diplo. Open this. There we go. So the notion here was there would be very clear... starting positions for the various factions that are, in fact, unassailable. They can't be taken. In a game of diplomacy, you can never lose these. So, the, uh, the intro was baby's first diplomacy game for a lot of these people. Make it unlosable because uh, we don't want people to feel like losers on the station itself. And this could just reflect a waxing and waning of different power dynamics. And um, is this a perfectly balanced map? No, um, but this is reasonably balanced. First turn, everybody gets a new supply. Then they'd have to sit on that for a turn. That's an opportunity to learn how to do that wrong. And then, oh, you get it. This is how you build a new unit. This is the only place you'll be able to send in new units. Great. And then nice and slow, casual, easy start. Easy start. And like next is next round, you'll have to move and not take anything and then decide at the last minute if you're going to move and take something. So potentially like the, uh, the sphere here in the OTO could quickly run into, oh, well, am I going to go for Nightclub Nevermore or am I going to bounce into a safer option like Bliss or the Banshee or whatever, what have you. And so, you know, nice, easy, slow introduction into what diplomacy is. Cautious. This was a very cautious map and I liked it, but because we had a tie, I spent most of the day, I made this the night before, most of the day I spent making this. A very different kind of diplomacy map. Uh, it's still on a grid. And one thing I'll say about this that the station map doesn't have. Do you see any diagonal connections here? No, all, all cardinal uh, north, south, east, west connections, all very clear. All very cut and dry. It's really easy. This is a very defensible map. This is a slow, defensible map by design. Then we get on to a fucking asteroid. And I, I made some mistakes. I made some mistakes in doing this. And I want to take a look at these. I, I'd really like to take a look at these. So turn zero. Presumably we have a turn zero right no Alex did you not save a turn zero this is what it started as 
then, okay, turn that art into something more bored looking like this, and this took a little while. There are a couple of key features missing. You'll note there are no assigned starting locations. I thought about going in and balancing out starts, just like I had for the other map, but it didn't make narrative sense here. Fictional narrative uh, here is that people are arriving on an asteroid, setting up claims, and competing in a gold rush that could or could not go hot, get a little spicy. And, well, uh, it got spicy very quickly by accident which was so cool and so fun, I'm getting ahead of myself. The game is far from over, so I'll go into the first couple of rounds, but I'm gonna be rather vague. Getting into specifics. I, um, I didn't choose for the players where they would start. So for the first build order, not only were they, they were picking where their uh, supply centers and uh, the supply centers that they can build from, would be. I didn't weigh in on any of this decision making. I sat back. Uh, a lot of my energy was invested in trying to get some of the less active people more active and somebody to step up for the independent faction in particular because they tend to lurk quite a bit. Me too, brother, but a uh, bad time. So then we can look at turn zero zero. Turn zero zero there's a lot going on. There's a, a couple small updates, though. So something that isn't clear visually with how I, I did the visual language for this map, it doesn't visually read that 43 wraps around to 33, nor is it visually clear that 53 wraps around to 44. I thought that the numbering might convey that. It's also not clear that 55 and 56 wrap around to 01 and 02. And I recognized this by the orders that people were sending in and by the way that people were talking about the map, but I couldn't issue any changes until the first update because somebody submitted orders really, really fucking quickly. And with them locked in, it felt unfair to give more information to other players. So this update came out the next day, day one, like, okay, day one, here's an update. These are wraparound, and they always have been. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear, but I'm making it clear to everyone now. I got us a bunch of clarifying questions. Again, baby's first game of diplomacy, uh, talking about is diagonal movement okay, or is it only, is it orthogonal? It's not orthogonal, right? That's orthogonal. It's, that's not moving at right angles. Oh. Am I right? It is orthogonal? That doesn't feel right. Yeah, 45 degree angles, not 90 degree angles. Um, moving at 90 degree angles. Okay, get, get the fucking crossword autofill out here. Right angles? I think compass directions uh, yeah north south east west there was a toss-up between those i thought well fuck it <laughs> i had imagined this is only being able to go up down left or right but why not this is already going to be chaotic based on <laughs> their starting locations which no one then i need to make this very clear there was zero coordination between players should there have been Yes. Yes, clearly there should have been coordination. This is a lesson learned from this turn. They fucked up. So 36, 48, and 38 here. This one, this one, and this one were initially claimed, all three claimed, by two different players. And prior to that happening, I said, hey, if this happens, you're just going to get bounced to something nearby. Nobody's going to get it. Well... I couldn't bounce green, the uh, axis, anywhere else. In the common turn, I was able to bounce south, but I couldn't bounce them this way, because the sphere over here, and I couldn't bounce them this way, because the OTO are over here. So I could have put the axis, or the axis here, the common turn here, the sphere here, and the non-aligned movement here, 
but I really did want to give them a fair shot. This is a setup that's fucking horrifying. This is a terrifying game start. You have... Um, like, this is almost an instant take unless this is also protected. But if this is protecting that, then um, you can get bounced, so you're unable to move. Well, not bounce, but you're unable to move, and you should be able to go in here, and you should be able to attack this to keep it from moving. You get a free move, you get a free move. You can either support so that 35 can move up into 34, or you do the smart thing and try to move here. Conversely, you should move up here with you supporting that move, so you take 48, bounce this back. Um, this attack gets foiled, you get squeezed, green here gets squeezed very easily. Why, why, did, why does it always default to a fucking rectangle? Yellow has, uh, the sphere have a bit more breathing room, and if the non-aligned movement are focused over here, you can probably push in and steal these, and potentially keep pushing eastward from there into here into here, into here and steamroll, so long as the OTO stay off your back. Interesting stuff, right? Like, there's a lot of fucking noise going on down here. This is a big fucking deal, though. The common turn have all, all of the north open to them. Again, I, I need to make it very clear. I told them to pick any, any three any three. The non aligned movement got a bonus one because they won that clue event that I was talking about earlier, and it was a fun little bonus, fun little incentive to, uh, hey, good job, play these games and you'll get rewarded in future games, sort of thing. The players chose these spots without talking to one another, generally without talking to their factions, and just, like, not... I'm super curious what the thought process was here. The South um, has slightly more con uh, supply centers than the North. They're more densely um, populated, so it's easier to move from one to the other. There's a lot more defensive opportunities, especially up here in the North. Things start getting a little spread out, but not even that spread out. But this is still pretty defensible, right? I'm shocked that no one went up North. Which, um, which caused some problems. So something accompanying this that I decided to do was I wanted to have an in-game or in-universe kind of news report. So in addition to you now the maps, which are pretty typical, and like some lore and like little news stories I posted to the Discord, I did a couple, I took... I took it upon myself to replicate the Associated Press's homepage, Flavor for Dawn of Victory. Now, I think there's a couple of typos on here, right? Maybe this one got away without any typos. This one was good. I've made typos on the, the last two because I've been rushing through and I don't proofread enough and I skim when I read. And I'm the editor, uh, so that's... <laughs> You gotta improve, Alex. So this was the Associated, or the AFPP, which is a play on the Associated Press, was time consuming to try to figure out what font to use to look close to the Associated Press's font without using the actual one. Uh, I don't think I used the same shade of red as the Associated Press. It's supposed to be a reference, not a ripoff changing some of these to these title pages or these links to in-universe stuff. Here are recent bulletins that are official Donna Victory stuff from the uh, Champlain group. Generally, the format these will follow is big event, like the thing that fuels the biggest event that's happening in the uh, diplomacy game right now, a secondary event, and a tertiary event then two completely unrelated things happening in the neighborhood, in the, like, stellar neighborhood, but not necessarily being a part of a game. 
So this helps to contextualize the game, which helps to contextualize the roleplay. And then to help contextualize this, we have this as a reminder of the larger universe around it. Folks seem to like this, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Now, the first version was in paint.net like this, so I just edited over in layers the Associated Press website, and I posted this, and I didn't think about me needing to replicate this. Speaking of me not thinking about needing to replicate, you know how I showed earlier? This is another mistake, and these are important to, to look at. This fucking map. This map is a tiny segment of a map about this big of the asteroid Psyche. Psyche is one of the most metal rich asteroids in our solar system. It is real, uh, and it is the basis for this fictional asteroid Syzygy. I use a luminosity map, a, I think a projected topographic map, and a third one layered on top of each other to create a whole, a, a huge map, and then I cut it down to about this size because I thought this had the most interesting visual appearance and topology to it, topography to it. Um, and, you know, visually it doesn't wrap, and I could have done something about this, but I was fairly happy with this. The grid overlay, I was tired and I didn't think about, but I flattened onto this, and I never saved the raw background image, and I could try to recreate it, and I have, but I haven't done it right. I had a need for the raw background image today, and I couldn't find it, so I had to do some awkward things to try to make it work so i'm kicking myself for that today so hey day one we have uh access and common term mining expeditions on syzygy exchange fire following communications failure just to explain hey you're not talking to each other everybody got bounced here so it's off to a hard start a uh, hot start got some tensions going on fun fun um the it, it has been a joy, genuinely a joy and a pleasure to be able to creep on all of these faction channels while the roleplay has been happening because the amount of wild fucking ideas, the amount of conspiracy theories, the amount of like just straight up schizo posting that some people have been doing with, when they're like panicked or worried is so, so fun. And it's not everybody can see what everybody's doing, right? But it's really fun being able to see a lot of it. Burp. Um, the Axis player in particular was panicking like crazy. Because this in initial event was them being in conflict over these areas, them being positioned between the non-aligned movement and the common turn, who are neither are a fan of theirs. It's, it's hot territory, it's spicy stuff, right? The Sphere starts out a bit more diplomatic, but they too are also pinched. The Common Turn and the Orion Treaty Organization are dead silent for the most part early on. And even up until now, they've been very much keeping to themselves. I can see what they're talking about, but I'm not gonna out them, so. Turn one. Did I did I show the moves? Yes. No, these were what I was saying people should do. No, this is what. Yeah, this is what I said people should do. So I um. No, this is early on. This was me tracking what people were talking about doing. But then didn't do. I did. I didn't fuck this up, right? I actually posted the moves. Or did I just post them up? Map update without showing any moves. I didn't show any moves. No, Alex. Alex, honey. Sweetie. Darling. Sugar pie. Honey bun. I have a lot to scroll through here. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. One of these fucking days, Alice. 
Bam, boom, straight to the moon. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't on, um... Wait, yeah, I totally did. I don't know where the fuck it is in my files, but I did... Turn one, we got our turn orders in. And they are... <laughs> Move one orders are... I have notes. All right, I have notes. Common turn. Let's start out with the good. Moving down here into five. Absolutely the right move. This 56 moving down into two. I get it. It's probably a good move, but I'm a much more aggressive player. What I would have done was attack 56 into 48, support with 55 into 48. Uh, the... I believe the common turn offered the Axis 48 is a like, hey, we're not really interested. We're just going to go south. You do your thing up here. So they have one, two, three, four, and five, provided nothing goes wrong by the next buy um, build phase. The Axis take first blood here, pushing into 45. The non-aligned player, I have no idea why the hell they were supporting a move from 45 into 34. I don't. They panicked and submitted their turn orders early, and it, it shows. The OTO, having a great time. Just, oh, that's free. That's free. Again, I'm aggressive. This move out of 29 into 25, I would not have done. I would have pushed into 41. I would have pushed into 41, or I would have held in 29, hoping that I could stab 41 uh, on the second move. Not aligned, it, we scrap 32 up here, but the spear move in the most offensive line uh, against the uh, non aligned movement here, taking 42, positioning in 31 and 53. So, th what it's visually reading at at this point is oh these two are splitting this one apart and they're just gonna divide it it's just gonna get partitioned and they're fucked they start out with four units but they're up against six so they'd have to be a very very good player and again they're new or very lucky meanwhile the common turn slow burn up here looks like it's not going to be affected at all it's super important that they hold on to these i was losing it in the uh, common turn chat and character being like hey why the hell did you actually give this to the axis i said to lie to them about giving that to them but now they're right on our doorstep and they could snipe 56 from us making it so that they get an additional new unit we get one fewer we also can no longer build there, can only build in 55 and 1. So it doesn't matter if we take two, we'd only be able to build one more. But again, I'm less trustworthy and less trusting than a lot of these players. So what what did the uh, the headline look like for this, uh, this first round? Well, <laughs> it, uh, it looked a little bit like um this so notably i want to put these side by side the fonts change why did the fonts change because i didn't save this one with any notes on what the fonts were and i couldn't for the life of me remember so to avoid that again mistakes we point to the mistakes we make i got i decided to go over to Inkscape and make a a layout sheet that I would just use to publish, right? This image file is always about roughly this big. Underneath that, there's an outline showing how much space is allocated to that image file. Text can go here. There's a backdrop to the text showing how big the field the text can take up is, etc., etc. And uh, because Inkscape is a vector program, I can resize things and fuck around with things a lot more easily. It looks cleaner. And I should have just started with this, but I have so much more time and experience in paint.net that I'm still slowly and reluctantly learning Inkscape. But uh, I'm really happy with, with this. There are 
Oh, this is the most recent one, isn't it? Oh, it totally is. Um, news one, news three. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. News one is uh, why have open a uh, paint.net. Yeah. So the uh, Axis not beating the Axis allegations go on the offensive. The Sphere also starts going on the offensive. Comintern and OTO are staying quiet. Then again, referring to the ongoing Champlain group bulletins, we have a map that I made of the Tau Ceti uh, solar system. There are other ones out there, but I wanted to draft one myself. Uh, this Tau Ceti E and F, which are the most likely to be habitable in that system, though they're both on like really the far edges of the habitability zone and in reality, neither of them will be habitable. Like, F is probably a mini Neptune, so maybe its moons are, or like a moon is. Maybe one of its moons maybe is kind of, sort of. And E, I think, is also too big. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but Dawn of Victory is going to do its own thing. So the, the soft lore that I introduced with the stuff over here is not, not hard. Then the bottom right here is a is a subtle reminder of a bulletin that went out a few weeks ago that a German heavy cruiser named Marienburg is visiting Vesta in this area. That um, this is roughly in the neighborhood of where the game is taking place. So this is a nod to, hey, on the first round, I gave a free unit to these people because of past roleplay. If you draw on larger setting stuff, if you roleplay well, if you think outside the box, I'm willing to reward that. And I said as much when I posted this, which spawned a very interesting, interesting idea. That interesting idea quickly, quickly, quickly went awry. Um, not 1-1. One, one. Is it 1-2 that I want? No, no, not yet. Is it just phase two? No. Maybe? Maybe. I, I've i got to start naming these consistently. I mean, it's not that important. So we had you pushing into here. And then this showing. No, but where's the fucking map where it should... Oh, I saved over this. Yeah, this... Turn zero, turn one. Oh yeah, 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 this is post turn one. Bad naming scheme. I get better at this. I get better at this. So at the end of turn one, beginning of uh, move turn two, this is what we're looking at. Occupied home core, but with three around it, you can take that back super easily. 46 is exposed. If you just wanted to stab back, support and stab into here. You would have to support this to stop that from happening, but then can't cover this. Axe is way overextended. Way, 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 way overextended. Common turn also vulnerable here, but common turn has potential if it reaches out to the OTO to move up to 48 with 38 supporting that move because 38 can't be moved. They will get this point. And it's just an opportunity for the OTO to fuck over the Axis. Now, I don't think this ask was ever directly made, which is a shame, but that was on the table, right? The OTO uh, is obviously moving up to take this. And it looks like at this point that they're set up for three plus two plus one for six for a total of three by on the build phase. Whereas the common turn have two three and it looks like they'll have a two by so okay not bad not great at this point the uh the sphere is looking like well minimum of one by and 43 is wide open right now so you might as well go 53 into 43 support it from 42 31 into 32 just to hold this in place or 
53 into 43, take a gamble, 31 into 32, support from 42. That way you are guaranteed to, you could potentially get three, and then 32 wouldn't be able to be retreating anywhere and would be destroyed. So you could get a kill and two supply from this for a total of, for the build order, three build, <laughs> Six total, and very tightly clustered. Very, very tightly clustered. What ends up happening is nothing like this. Now, I started drafting in a, in a private channel that I'm in. What I feel the best moves were for everybody every round. So the first round... This was a, what I thought the best moves looked like. The Axis trying to move to 48. The common turn obviously trying harder. The Axis stabbing into 45. 33 taking 32. 43 just hitting 52 to stop it from doing whatever it's doing. And uh, I guess I had 45 defend? Yeah, just, just holding and being supported by 44. I would not optimistic about this start again it's four against six you try to get one and just hold what you have the oto i thought well okay clearly the sphere are gonna stab this way stab them first they went north instead these two are a given it'd be wild if they didn't take these and then the common turn just doing its thing up here okay yeah no, i mean come on alex everybody would have thought to do that look i'm not acting like i'm fucking uh machiavelli up here right i i'm not uh sun tzu nor do I pretend to be. So, after round one, for the round two actions, this is what I had in mind. So you way overextended here. I I thought that the sphere should just, or the non ally movement should just go all out in taking this back. You get one attack and two support on this, and just fucking pray. 32, you're fucked, and either it bounces or God help you, but you have to at least keep some of these around. And these three are really defensible and are able to support one another and you have a solid thing going on here. You can hold these three from one direction for a while. The Axis I thought should just try to hold this. They get nothing out of pushing into 34. They should try to hold this, but really the Axis was in a super fragile position super super fragile position and and i shocked that no one that it wasn't taken further advantage of again this uh, common turn oto collaboration was something that i was screaming from the rooftops is an obvious move it's a free fucking take nobody uh loses from this 39 obviously holds here 25 has to move to 24 31, let's get you into a point. Helping from 42, 53, let's get you into a point. But this isn't what happened. Move phase two had some stupid, interesting, charitable, but really dumb moves. The Axis player felt bad for the non ally movement. So they extended an offer. They asked Alex, hey, I have an idea. Would it be possible for the Sphere, the Axis, and the non ally movement to somehow collude on relocating the non ally movement somewhere else? We don't want to wipe them out, we just want them gone. I know there aren't game mechanics to support this, but narratively it makes a lot of sense. And my ask for that was, okay, you have to spend a full turn taking no actions, I don't mean one movement, I mean both movement phases, taking no actions from all three factions, and you can move them. You can move them. Uh, my rationale is basically, that's a huge deal. It frees up a bunch of free territory for you two, for the sphere and axis that no one else can take. And you are taking your problem and literally deporting it to become somebody else's problem. 
it's a very fascist move. Uh, so thematically, I liked it. I liked it. It was not smart. You don't take somebody's home spawn point, give them no means to get it back, and then say, hey, I have a great idea. You should just let this happen and we'll let you live. Understandably, that didn't fly. So the not great... The first one to move here, and uh, I think was the common turn, holding. Again, all three of these holding, no collusion whatsoever. Moving into five, holding that, moving into six. So you're up two. It's nice. Could have really easily been an up three. The OTO does something that confuses the hell out of me and moves out of 39 to take 29. This was right after I had reiterated that you need to have a unit in a territory when the turn ticks over to control it. And I, I think that maybe this player decided, hey, I want this position on 44 or 41 and I want to be able to stab here or I want to be able to support this more than I care about one more unit right now. Which was dumb. I'm really sorry, this was dumb. If you had stayed in 38, stayed in 39, and taken 24, you would have had a buy three. Then you would have had a unit in 29 come the next move round anyway, because in build, you would have got one in 27, 28, and 29. This move was just bad, and it looks aggressive. I'm a big fan of aggressive moves, but this was, uh, this ain't it, Chief, this ain't it. You could have moved into 40 or 50 if you wanted to threaten both of these and make that threat pretty clear. But instead, all you kind of did was waste, waste to buy. Now the end of the world. So the Axis somehow survives this without being punished more. Um, 33 defensively moves back to 43. Not a line movement. We're not buying that this deal was legitimate at all. And, I mean, who could blame them? I think I would have had 33 support 44 into 45. I would have had 34 stab 46. I would have doubled down hard on being aggressive and taken advantage of them not having the frontage to cover themselves. But nah, not bad. Not bad, right? Spicy. Hot. Getting out to some, some good stuff. And, uh... That, that brings us to today, to the news article for today, for News 3, because I'm, I'm titling these well, for the Independent Expedition launching a successful counteroffensive amidst Sphere Axis relocation talks. You can see how I was like, man, I wish I had that full map so I could uh, get rid of this fucking grid on here and just have the symbols overlaid on top of it. Too bad, Alex. Too fucking bad. Should have thought about that days ago. Then uh, just a little flavor about, oh, you're getting more units, yay, and a little bit of flavor about the common turn and Oto being dead silent publicly. They're active privately in DMs with other players, but they are not saying a goddamn thing publicly. Meanwhile, the Axis uh, is very loud publicly. The Sphere is talkative. And not a line movement are also kind of talkative, but less so over time. This is a, a nod to the uh, nearby Solar Treaty Organization, its members in Alpha Centauri, Sirius, and Tau Ceti, saying, Hey, just like last time with Marienburg, here's a reminder that there are some nearby actors that you could try to motivate to get involved. It would be a bad idea. If you don't handle it very, very carefully, bringing in outside authority is a good way to end up a puppet state. But like, you could try. You could try and then just uh, a little bit of a joke here. We have firecracker rods as a cannon uh, weapon in Dawn of Victory. And I asked the, uh, the staff member who consulted on coming up with the idea, like, did you have a name for the guy who made these mining? Like, I don't know, something German. He's not a big names guy. That's my department. And we have a German mod member, mod team member, and I didn't ask them either. Instead, I just went with 
Der Cracker Papa because it was funny. And I'm sure that translation doesn't hold up. Like, um, there's three or four words for, for firecracker. Not firework, firecracker. Um, and it, I initially went with something more serious, like the father of firecrackers or something. But then, like, Der Cracker Papa was an option. I'm like, I got, I got to do that. That's so dumb. It's so dumb. That's so fun. And that brings us um, up to up to now, up to now. Turn, turn two. It should say turn two. Is it not say turn two? Phase two. Turn zero, turn one. What the fuck did I publish this as today? Yes, this is what we're back to. This is with all the new units. And I have, I have thoughts. And again, in this sneaky back channel where I just talk with uh, mods who are not playing the game. There is a mod. They are playing the game. They no longer have permissions to see any of the other channels, which is very funny. They're on vacation. Uh, essentially. What I said last turn should have happened is this. No, no, no. This is what I said should happen now. This is what I think people should do now. They will not, but I think this is the move. I think that non-aggression or the uh, non-alignment movement had a great save. But game over. I I don't think that you are good here. 32 and 43 can support each other so long as they're both not attacked. That's 2 on 1. And that might be enough to rebuff, but you're up against 4. There's no reason why the sphere wouldn't just split 52 into 43, 31 into 32, support it from 42, support it from 53. And unless one of these is getting this is supporting this, and getting supported by both of these, it won't hold. So you're you're gonna lose these unless something happens here. And 45, you have to support from 44 in order to hold it. So the axis and the sphere, so long as they're both pushing, can overwhelm any defense that the non-aligned movement can put up. It is not winnable on their own. It straight up is not. So, uh, they've got to reach out to the common turn to actually make this fucking move I've been screaming about this entire game. Or this very other obvious move. They gave up 39, they can always get it back now, no big deal. 28 to 40, 29 to 41, you hold this, um, and you... You just either force the axis to, or the sphere to pick one or the other, or you can move into 41 and support it from 40, and they'd have to turn the attention of whichever two have stayed behind on trying to take that back, potentially moving a third one back trying to take that back, and you can stymie this advance. You can break up this advance, slow it down, and buy the non alive movement some time. The common turn, meanwhile, and, and the OTO have free reign in here. I think first round should move to 4, 12, 13, and depending on how things go between the OTO and common turn, not do like 8, 9, 13, 14. No, push down to 15 and 16. Grab these first and then backfill these later. Because the sooner you form a front line of two or three units here, the sooner, honestly, you can start bullying this one unit out of here and take all of this. And if you take all of this with a front this small and a front this small, there is nothing everyone else combined can do to stop you. It's it is a it's the common turns game to lose right now. They need to be more aggressive, and I know the player, and they're not going to be this aggressive. <laughs> But they could, they could do it. OTO is also in a great space. They can stab. And, you know, this deal I showed with uh, Comintern, they could turn around and suggest, hey, Comintern, 
uh, we have a, you know, a deal and understanding. Axis are being pretty aggressive. Support us moving into 48 uh, so we can take this off your doorstep. And I'm a more trustworthy neighbor. You know, I we can set up a demarcation line of like, I get all these, you get up north, whatever. The Yokio would have the majority of territories that way, but there's there's deals to be made here. I'm so excited to see what happens next. The Axis and the Sphere are in rough shape, but if they can, if they're good about their orders and they're able to push down the non-align movement, they may have time to turn around and push any push from the OTO or common turn out. Really, the Sphere is the one in greater danger here. So long as the Axis doesn't lose the Sphere, not looking bad. The non-aligned movement needs to beg, borrow, steal, promise whatever it can to OTO specifically to make these aggressive moves on their behalf, or they're fucked. They are they're <laughs> absolutely fucked. They need somebody else involved, and Common Turns made it very clear they're going up here instead. I, I want to reiterate, these are not the current orders. No orders have been submitted yet. These are just what I think the right move would be. Is that going to happen? Oh, fuck knows, man. That, that pie in the sky idea of like, what if we just take our problem and move them over here? Idea caught me way off guard. So good. So good. So yeah, having a lot of fun. Lessons learned keep backup files of all the assets you make even if you think it's a one and done you won't need it again hold on to it anyway image files aren't that big just make a directory put them in there you never know right definitely take the time if you're doing a longer form project to make a kind of plug and play sort of format like this this is going to save you so much time in the long run do it. Take your time. Spell check things. Because I fucked that up quite a few times now. Uh, two. Two out of three is not good, though. And... Yeah. Yeah. I... I... <sighs> if we had enough active players, I had thought about what if every player controls one army? And if we do this again, and there are enough active players, that could be fun. <laughs> be chaotic as hell, but that could be a lot of fun. I am so thrilled with how much fun people have been having. It's been very exciting to watch. It's been very enjoyable to see everybody's reactions, uh, candid reactions amongst themselves, and see how fired up people who aren't even playing are about the whole affair. It's been a great motivator and contextualizer for roleplay to create ongoing events in the world in the fiction near them, uh, relative to them that they can relate to and isn't like just big and out there in the, the void somewhere. It's stuff actively impacting their material situation where they are. It's off to a great fucking start. I probably... I'm tempted to do daily updates. I am. I have been tempted to stream me updating the map every time, but I think I might just record it or stream it on Twitch and not announce it on the server. Why? I like it being a surprise when the posts go out. I like the news being simultaneous. I like the news being simultaneous in a finished fashion. So I may record me working on these and post them after the uh, the update goes up, but I don't think that I'll be live streaming them to Discord. Twitch, obviously, I'm probably okay with that. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyhow, it's been, what, like an hour? Almost. It is an hour just now, so I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I have other things I'd like to do tonight. And you, unfortunately, are not one of them. I will be back um, 
maybe tomorrow with a little bit of planning for uh, actual Dawn of Victory, not roleplay stuff, but maybe a roleplay update if I feel up to it. I'm gonna do one either way, but it's just a question of if we make content out of it. What, what am I squeezing air honkers for content out of it? Uh, air boobies, air boobies, air boobies. Um, some world building stuff should be done sooner than later, going over the nameless, making sure shit's good to go if we have a stream, but Mark is busy working on Templin Institute stuff right now. Um, there was an intent to stream, but, you know, our, our admins and staff are uh, juggling a lot right now, relevant to the project and relevant outside the project. So uh, to, what's that going to look like? Pfft, brother, that is a great fucking question. I don't have an answer to that. What I do know is um, I'm having fun. I'm really grateful. I'm really excited that this has been off to a great start. I can't wait to see where it goes. I have a feeling I know what the result's gonna be, but fuck, you never really do with these kind of games. I am exhausted, and I've been having a hell of a week. A hell of a week. Um, with a lot of confusion going on outside of this. Now I'm juggling some uh, some IRL stuff right now, so this has been a <laughs> very welcome distraction. There are a few, a few games that I would consider streaming soon. Um, I've been playing around a lot with a mod for Europa Universalis 4 that I've liked quite a bit. Though, I don't think I want to get back into streaming Paradox titles, just some principle. I have promised a couple of people I would fool around with Final Fantasy XIV, but I'll be honest, the more I think about it, the less I want to do it. Uh, Daggerfall has been something I have put off for damn near a year at this point, and I really want to, but I'm not in the headspace and it would feel weird starting it right now. I also had a lot of fun doing kind of a a quick uh, look at I was a teenage exocolonist. I was playing that with someone and I don't know if we'll hop back in and play that again. I'm right now the vibe I'm getting is probably not though I, I you know just just being honest I'd much rather play it privately with them in kind of an intimate environment but I don't think that's gonna happen. Life is uh, always, always so full of complications. So maybe I'll pivot and do it here. I was having a lot of fun, but it's uh, it's very raw, vulnerable stuff. And I'm I'm a sucker for I'm a fucking sucker for those life is strange, earnest, emo, sad boy games. So maybe maybe. Regardless of what I decide, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Until tomorrow, or whenever it is that I'm back here again, I'm going to say toodaloo. Take care. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Mm,